Cronenbourg 1664, sponsor du Tour de France. For British cycling, the dream has come true. The world's greatest race, the Tour de France, arrives on the south coast. Dover Castle welcomes the entourage of 3,000. All entertained by the pageantry befitting a great event. The Prince of Wales Royal Regiment, first the trumpeters. Then the band. To add even more glamour, America's Dallas Pom Pom Girl. And falling from 4,000 feet, the Tigers parachute team leader, Ian Cashman. He arrives with the race leader's yellow jersey. At 10.45, the flag drops. The race in Britain has begun. The route, 206 kilometres, going from Folkestone onto Canterbury through Ashford, Royal Tunbridge Wells and over Ditchling Beacon to Brighton. And here we are now at the finishing line in Brighton. And if you ask anybody along the race route today, it's quite clear who they would love to win the stage. One of the two British riders, Sean Yates or Chris Borman. We ask them the question, can they? No, it's very hard. It's very hard in, in, the, in the finals here. And I've had pretty good legs, so I, could, I might have a dig and uh, wait and see. Well, today, obviously, I, I'm, uh, it's, it's in my country. I'll be looking for opportunities with the tour. There is no, no quarter given. so. I'll be looking for opportunities, but I'm not going to be staying away all day and I'm going to, going to tax myself because it's, uh, I'm looking towards that, that next time trial. Well, it's not only a big day for Britain, but it's also a big day for the new race leader in Johan Museo of Belgium. Overall, he leads Miguel Indurain by 10 seconds and Rolf Sorensen by 19. Sean Yates is ninth and Chris Boardman now back to 20th. On the first climb, which came at Black House Hill after 16 kilometres, the King of the Mountains leader, fittingly, Peter de Klerk, was first ahead of Claudio Chiapucci and the Australian Neil Stevens. Today the weather's perfect for racing. A cool start to the day and then sunny with a few showers in the afternoon and a light southerly wind. Temperatures though will be in the low 20s. And another day in the Tour de France and another faller. This time it's the Gann teammate of Chris Bourbon, Didier Roux. But at least he was soon up and riding again. But by the time the race reached Ashford and the special sprint point, Francisco Cabello from Spain, who'd broken away after only 20 kilometres, had been joined by the Frenchman, Frédéric Magnon. The pair of them now had built a massive lead over the field of five minutes. This was the warning bells for the GB team of Johan Museo to start the chase. A well-disciplined outfit they are too. They were soon at the head of the field. They were holding the time gap to round about five minutes. And then a nice piece of tradition in the world of cycling when enemies become friends. Even the GB team stopped the chase when Sean Yates moved ahead to greet his family in the Ashdown Forest. A marvellous occasion indeed for Sean Yates riding in his 11th Tour de France. But the race continued, and as the riders reached Ditchling, the crowds were still enormous, continuing the trend of the day. The two leaders were now facing up to Ditchling Beacon, and they were being pursued by, among others, the dangerous Italian Flavio Vanzella. At the moment, it's Cabello of Spain leading uh, Frederic Magnan, but the chase down has begun, and the crowds have been enormous along the route since we've come right into the heart of Sussex, and they've cheered these riders all of the way. But there is a chase group forming. It's a serious move indeed because Flavio Vanzella, lying fourth in this race, just 22 seconds off the yellow jersey, is on the attack. With him is Rob Harmeling of Holland and Mario de Klerk of the Belgian Lotto team. And with them too was the man that started the move. He's got a great name. It's Wanderly Magalhaes from Brazil. We've never seen him before, but in fact what happened was he punctured and has got back to the main field. The race is now in the village of Ditchling, which means that the next stop will be the big climb, which will take them over the top of the beacon. 
and here's the chase now I think that they'll come together before the end this is a very good strong chase group coming through here these riders just got clear before but the gap is still just three minutes and it may well be that if the first two riders don't weaken towards the end they may well pull off the surprise and stay clear in this Tour de France but the group of three behind especially with Vanzella is very dangerous and it may well be that it will come all back together as we get into the streets of Brighton and just look at this now, a puncture yep. on the climb as we approach Ditchling Beacon. This really is sad. This is the man who started it all, Fred, uh, Francisco Cabello. Well, we saw earlier on that the chase man punctured at Magal Hayes. Now we are seeing here that the puncture has come to Cabello. And the question is, as he starts the climb of Ditchling Paul, uh, whether in fact Mannion will wait for him. Well, it would be an intelligent move if he did because Cabello is a much better climber than Mania. As we get round the corner here, we can see the cars just in front. He didn't lose a great deal of time, not as much definitely as Magal Hayes did before. And I think before we get to the top of the climb, we'll see the climber from Spain get back up there into contention. I think that Mannion will try to control his pace. He needs Cabello to help him survive to the end, if indeed they can survive. And there you can now see that Magnon is pacing himself on the climb, awaiting the return of Francesco. And now we're on the climb of the beacon itself, and this is where the crowd is going to be at its thickest. And coming right back up to him, and I don't suppose the crowd realised that Cabello has punctured him. I think he was being dropped by the Frenchman, but in fact, uh, nothing could be further from the truth. Cabello has now rejoined the Frenchman as the climb itself steepens. Definitely, he looks across there, he's trying to talk to him, probably a little bit of French, a little bit of Spanish saying, look, I waited for you, just let's take it easy as we get over the top of the climb. And now the three chasers are going through the 25 kilometer banner and it's Rob Harmeling is getting dropped and leaving away the two riders in front of him. The big Dutchman who's having a hard time yesterday just can't quite get over the steep climbs here. Well, Harmeling has never ever professed to be a climber. He's a very strong man on the flat, but when you get a little climber here like Vanzella, sits there and pedals the low gears, uh, Mario de Klerk is going to have to uh, find his work cut out to stay with him as well. But you know, Paul, this is turning out to be quite surprising. If Vanzella gets rid of all the riders with him, he's free as a bird, and he's in yellow tonight. In fact, on this climb here, he could really get rid of Mario de Klerk because Vanzella looked exceptionally good. These two riders now just taking it side by side up Ditchling Beacon. They've had a hard day together in front. They've been in front for an awful long time, and they realize that they both need each other now. This is Vanzella putting the pressure on behind on the beacon, and it looked to me as if de Klerk was just about losing the wheel. Oh, and you were right, he's lost the wheel. And so now de Klerk has cracked as well, and Flavio Vanzella, fourth this morning, 22 seconds off the yellow jersey, is now free to go and take the race lead. He will not be chased by his team, because obviously, even though they lose their team leader in Johan Museo, the jersey passes across to a teammate, and Museo will drink champagne with him and that will be fine. We're sorry about the little bit of picture interference we have here. It's because of conditions uh, linking up to our helicopters over the climb here of Ditchling Beacon. But as you will appreciate, they're pretty exciting shots. And what a marvellous crowd here. As these two riders go towards the summit, I would say in distance that Vanzella is no more now than half a mile behind. He really isn't very far behind, and you can almost see the difference in speed. These two riders really suffering on the beacon. Under the 25 kilometres to go, Banner, even though in Britain we talk miles, you see the riders are told in kilometres. That's just over 15 miles from the finish, and the crowd is wonderful on top of the beacon. And as you can see, another bicycle in sight, because they weren't allowed to bring them up here, and all their cars, because the road is simply, this is all there is. There is the road you see, and the rest is countryside. Cabello takes the King of the Mountains prize there, but as I said earlier in the day, these two riders aren't contesting these sprints. They're of secondary importance to them. Their most important aim today is to try and stay clear and get that stage victory. And it looks now as if Vanzella is closing down from behind. Vanzella has got rid of everybody now. He's obviously thinking about trying to get up to the two riders in front. He realizes now that at the end of the road here in Brighton, he could have his first yellow jersey of his career, and that would be a fantastic thing. And so Vanzella goes over the top, the Italian, and he won't have seen crowds like this even in his home tour of Italy, uh, because these are truly very, very good indeed. And here is Cyril Guimar, the manager of Mania, coming up to probably tell him, you know, this could work out, uh, and he's explaining to him that Vanzella is now chasing him on his own. That will come through as a surprise, 
And so, as the race progresses, we'll take a break. Welcome back. Well, the wind's getting up a little bit here at the finish in Brighton now, but for most of the day it's been glorious here, although you wouldn't know it from looking at the beach. The cool place to be seen promenading this morning, at least until the police closed it, was along the finish line on Marine Parade. The corporate hospitality tents were packed too, full of those with money or connections, pretending it was Wimbledon with wheels. The staff, though, seemed to be having more fun. We're all the working staff here. <laughs> all the caterers. You sure you've been working? You sure you haven't working been uh, very hard and looking consuming after what everybody. you should have been serving? No, no, I don't drink, but it's been absolutely wonderful. Elsewhere along the route, it was a good old-fashioned day out, very much the Tour de France with a British accent. As the stands filled up, though, one spectator was perhaps more nervous than the rest, Sean Yates' wife Pippa, there along with baby Liam. Very exciting. It's jolly nice for Sean that it comes to the UK on his last tour. And it was nice to see on the big screen earlier that he was allowed to go ahead to see his family on the hill. It was very nice. Yeah, got up. Kiss mum and dad. Yeah, well, kiss mum anyway. <laughs> I'm sure he'll want to kiss this one when he gets to the finish I line. Hope, I hope we get to see him. It's all going to be rushed at the end of the race. Um, but we're, we're sort of near the finish line, so hopefully he'll spot us and come over. Well, I'm sure Pippa's not alone in hoping that Sean makes a good showing today and we'll have a full recap on his homecoming ride through East Sussex in tomorrow's programme. For now, though, back to the road and the racing. Well, there's the latest time check now, 49 seconds. Van Zeller is going like a train as he tries to, to reach a Cabello and Mannion. Uh, just in fact, as the rain begins to fall, it's only a light rain, but I think it's coming in across the um, channel here as we come towards the last few kilometres of the stage. And here, in fact, is Flavio Van Zeller, and he has a problem. Now, I'm wondering if he's going to take out his back wheel. He's, well, he has a slow puncture, and the weather possibly has done that. Once the roads get wet, you pick up the grit, and uh, this is unbelievable today. Three riders we've seen in the leading groups uh, blow out tyres at crucial moments, but that was a great change by the mechanic. That was a very good change. In fact, he was a lot more be quicker than he was with uh, Magalhaes just a little bit earlier. 15, 20 seconds and he was away again. You can see he's just redu he's just altering his back brake a little bit there. Now, the little climb here and the two riders uh, beginning to tire, obviously now, and they deserve to be tired too when you think that they've been in the lead for virtually all of the race today. These two riders here on the climb, it's tough climb and they really are suffering see the little Spaniard on the left hand side getting out of the saddle every now and again just to keep the rhythm going the reason to do this is so that he can actually pull on the handlebars at the same time as he's pushing down on the pedals that gives him just a little bit extra force Mania not being a renowned climber just sitting back and riding as comfortably as he can if it comes down to a sprint between these two riders, well, Emmanuel Mania should have no difficulty at all getting rid of the little Kelme rider because he is being a big reputation as a sprinter. Five kilometers to go there. That is five kilometers to go once they've done a lap of the circuit. There's the gap back to Van Zeller, one minute and six seconds. And he looks to me as if he's flying along, but since the top of Dietzling Beacon, he really hasn't been able to close the gap anymore. So we're now on the small circuits in the finish of Brighton here. The same two riders who have dominated the day's racing are still clear, but the chase is dramatic. Flavio Van Zella, the only survivor of a four-man chasing group, and there he is, is now closing in rapidly. And what a crescendo to the day stage of the Tour de France, because if this man uh, finishes more than 22 seconds ahead of the main field, he will pull on the leader's yellow jersey tonight and take it away from his teammate, Johan Museo. Now, these, without doubt, have been the two heroes of a day in Britain that will be remembered. A day in which the crowds have turned out in their tens of thousands to watch the Tour de France, and the organisers now will feel they made a great decision in bringing the race here. They're now going through the finishing line, and they're about eight or nine minutes from the finishing line proper, and they get an enormous cheer here, because these are the leaders for the best part of four and a half hours. Cabello takes through Magnon. The clock starts on the finishing line as Flavio Vanzella, a rider who punctured 
and then remounted and then has continued his chase and he's now almost on them as they go through towards the climb again in Brighton. It's going to be a very long way for these riders to go around, a long eight and a half kilometres, 25 seconds is the gap on the line to Vanzella and it looks as if he's pulled away a little bit and here is the main field coming down the finishing straight, led through by Chris Borman who's trying it, he's going to try and get that yellow jersey back. Well, can you believe it? Borman was going to have his day, you bet he was, yellow or not, and the crowd are going to welcome this. Borman has gone clear of the field. He rides now fourth man on the road. There's the yellow jersey of Museo, looking a little bit concerned now as the race starts to fragment in the last few miles of the day. And we're looking at Flavio Vanzella, who is now just 18 seconds from reaching the two leaders who have led this race for four hours today. And if he dare look over his shoulder, he might see the figure of Chris Borman chasing him and just behind Borman the whole field. It's down to 14 seconds now. And Vanzella racing not just to win the stage, but to take the overall lead. Well, what a performance he's put in since Ditchling Beacon. He started Ditchling Beacon two minutes and 45 seconds behind these two riders. He's been coming back all the time. He pulled back one and a half minutes on them on the Ditchling Beacon, and then it was hovering round about one minute. And you can see him, he's got them in his sights now. They're just starting the climb. They've got about five and a half kilometers to go. And it's going to be a good move for these two riders as well to have a little bit of reinforcement. The main field still just over one minute back, but a great performance by Chris Boardman, who's trying to get back into contention. Well, I have to say, I don't want these two to lose it now. Cabello is not a great cyclist by world terms, but he is a very good professional rider. He won the Tour of Mallorca uh, this year. And indeed, Manion is a young professional in his third, second full season as a pro. He turned late in 1992 and has had eight wins this year. And he's gone. In fact, as I'm speaking to you, he's cracked at Cabello. The man who started everything has ridden away. And Manion is gambling here, Paul, not using too much energy, perhaps. Hopes he can come back into contact when Van Vanzella comes past him. That is his only possibility, but I think he's cracked and he's really been blown away because that was a fast acceleration made by the little Spanish rider who's obviously a much superior climber. He knows now that somebody's coming up from behind, but I think once Vanzella catches up, and this is Chris Boardman. Boardman is still clear of the main field. What a player. This is incredible. Chris Boardman, who dreamt of bringing this race to Britain with his yellow jersey, lost it yesterday and he will not give up. We are watching one of Britain's real stars of the future, the Olympic champion of 1992 in Barcelona on the velodromes, converting to the road and having led the Tour de France to a British record over the previous three and a half days and now trying to win a stage as well. Well, around about to four minutes to go, or maybe five down to the line with the descent. Cabello is surely the, the moral winner of the race today, Paul. He was the first attacker. He was on his own for so long. He got joined. He went away on his own again. He is without doubt the man who sh <laughs> the man of the match, as they say in football, certainly, but really deserves the flowers of victory. And now we drop back. Mannion has managed to hang on to Vanzella, and Vanzella's progress has slowed a little bit. Mannion will find his legs again. Now the climb is over. But how close, we must ask, is Chris Borman. And in fact, Vanzella looking over his shoulder to see if Zaina, an Italian on a rival team, is getting any closer. Well, it's still round about 15 seconds for these two riders. Good move by Magna, obviously not a climber. He managed to get in with Vanzella as he came over the top there. And now the two of them can work together. If at all Cabello slows down in the last couple of kilometers, it will all come back together and the three of them will sprint it out for victory. But this little Spanish rider looks as if he's doing exceptionally well now. He really has got it going again. He's got the morale of knowing that he can win a stage of the Tour de France and that can push you over and beyond the red zone, as they call it in cycling, the time when everything really hurts. For three or four kilometers now, he can forget about pain. He's just going to give it everything he's got. Two kilometers to go, and this is a marvelous, marvelous pursuit around Brighton as they tried to catch the man they thought would have died hours ago out there on the course, how they misjudged him. A rider that they don't know a great deal about. He's not one of the big names in world cycling, but it, now he deserves to be. He's been out in front for the best part of five hours, and we're still waiting to see for further news of Borman and Zaina because we haven't picked him up for a while. But these are the chasing two riders, Vanzella and the Bandit, who was dropped by Cabello on the climb of Elm Grove and now has had to go back to Vanzella.
down to the finish and I think we're going to see justice done now because this is Francisco Cabello is shortly going to see the red kite in the sky his first Tour de France and in a few minutes time I think we'll be able to say his first Tour de France stage win and my goodness me has he deserved it today he broke clear of the field after only 20 kilometers some 12 miles at one point he led by six and a half minutes he was joined by the Frenchman Matian. He dropped the Frenchman Matian here in Brighton and has found the strength from somewhere to go away on his own and withstand all of the pressure of the finest cyclist in the world. He can now see the finish. Well, he really can. He's looked over his shoulder and he knows now this is a time when the cyclist knows that he's got the victory in the pocket. What a fantastic performance. He knew that he had to get rid of Magnan. He knew that Magnan was a better sprinter and he really has pulled out all the stops just down the road. You can see Van Zella a little bit further down. You can see Chris Boardman as well. But what a superb ride by the little Spanish rider, Francesco. Look. But remember, Paul, that Van Zella is racing for yellow. He may have lost the stage as that is going justifiably so to the little man from Kelney, the last team in the race that were accepted Kelney. And now he has won a stage, rightly delighted. What a way to win a stage. This was no lucky win. This was a brilliant piece of bike riding. And so he comes home, five hours and 12 minutes in the saddle today for him, Francisco Cabello of Spain. And we'll look down the road because the time is of the essence now for the man, Flavio Vanzella because about 15 seconds is all he will need to take the leader's yellow jersey. The sprint is on, and Magnan, has he still got the legs? Vanzella could do with the second place time bonus. As they come up to the line now, Magnan gets it. Vanzella is second, and here's the sprint for Chris Boardman now, and I don't think Zayn is going to deny him a fine finish in the Tour de France. He's going to get fourth place on the line, and that is a marvelous performance with the whole field uh, breathing right down his neck. So you see, the right men do win the stages in the Tour de France on occasion, and no one deserved his victory today more than Francisco Cabello of Spain in 5 hours, 12 minutes and 53 seconds. Second, Emmanuel Magnon, and third, Flavio Vanzella. And what a great inspired performance by Chris Bourbon over the last few miles to finish in fourth place. The happiest man in the Tour today, Cabello on the podium, the biggest win of his young career. Overall, though, there was a change. Flavio Vanzella just slipping into the yellow jersey by four seconds now ahead of this morning's leader and his teammate, Johan Museo, with Miguel Indurain dropping back into third place. Well, straight after the finish, Paul Sherwin had found Sean Yates, but so too had Sean's wife, Pippa, and his son, Liam. Well, Sean, did you ever think that you could do that on British soil? No, I mean, it's a, it's a dream come true. It's my 11th tour. And I never dreamt when I started cycling that it would come through Ashdown Forest. What about the crowds though? I mean, the French have been asking us all week, what's it going to be like in England? What did you think? They were huge. They amazed me. I knew there was going to be a lot of people out, you know, from previous experience, but they just outnumbered anything I imagined. And it was, you know, more crowds than in France, I think. It was unbelievable. So you're happy to be here. What about tomorrow? We've been waiting for you to try and launch an attack for a stage win, Sean. Yeah, I mean, it's hard. I was, you know, if I'd have had the super legs today, I was... I would have tried, but I was just hanging on for grim death on the climb up there, so, you know, maybe another day. Well, there's still a chance for Sean Yates to win a stage of the Tour de France tomorrow because the race stays in Great Britain. We move along the coast now to Portsmouth. The race going on a route there, which will take the riders far north to Basingstoke, and then they'll swing back south, coming in through Rowlands Castle, Havant, and back into Portsmouth. We'll be back with you in the morning with a live programme at 10.25, and then in the afternoon, regular updates during racing, which begins at 2 o'clock. In the evening, our usual programme, and that is at 8 o'clock. Well, today the people of Kent and Sussex really did make the riders in the Tour de France feel at home. It was great to be part of the celebration. Goodbye. <laughs>